Good Monday evening to M11 Alive Storm Tracker Meteorologist Melissa Nord. We are tracking what is potential tropical cyclone one. So for the first time this hurricane season, the National Hurricane Center is issuing forecast advisories on a developing tropical system. Not quite fully tropical in nature, and that's why this is not named yet, but it is forecast to become our first named storm of the season as we head throughout the next 36 to 48 hours before it ultimately makes a landfall. So it's a little Little bit disorganized still. The center of the low is right over here in the Bay of Campeche, but the strongest winds associated with this were actually about 200 miles to the north, so it's not located where the center of that low is. And for all those kind of reasons, the Hurricane Center says, All right, we know this thing is going to cause some impacts. We're going to go ahead and issue the cone of uncertainty and put those tropical storm watches out, but it's not quite a name system yet. Speaking of watches, this color yellow on the map, this is Texas right here. This shows you the latest tropical storm watches which have been issued. So these are for the coastal waters all the way from Galveston all the way down to Brownsville, Texas. And also you notice some inland areas near Corpus Christi also now have some tropical storm watches in effect. They do expect some of those tropical storm force winds already middle of this week that could impact parts of those areas. Here's the official track. This is from five o'clock on your Monday. And this has the winds right now at 40 miles per hour. But as I mentioned, those are not located where the center of that low is or very close to it. So it doesn't have the right characteristics to be called a tropical storm yet or a tropical depression. But the strongest gust with this right now, 50 miles per hour, and it's moving to the west northwest, eventually gets steered over a little bit more to the west. So winds are going to stay about the same over the next 24 hours. You notice here on the icons, this shows tropical storm as we get into tonight and tomorrow. I know that's what these icons say. The Hurricane Center in their discussion is saying you're not sure this is actually going to become all of the, the characteristics aligned to be a tropical storm quite yet tonight. But eventually the steering currents take it more westward. So the center of this thing will eventually head on into Mexico. But as we know, with tropical systems, the impacts can be felt well outside the center. So we are looking at impacts in Texas, and that's why there is now a tropical storm watch in effect. If this does become our first uh, name storm of the, the season, Alberto is going to be that first name of the Atlantic season. Then we'll go keep going down the list. It goes Alberto to Barrel, Chris, Debbie, and so on and so forth. And if you missed it, NOAA issued its most aggressive preseason forecast ever. Uh, for the Atlantic Basin, so they're forecasting a very active season with over 17 named storms. All right, Hurricane Hunters did fly into this thing today, and I'm going to show you the kind of path they took. They took a path, you notice here, they were almost making north to south lines, and that's because as they were flying this storm, they were dropping several weather instruments into the atmosphere. They're known as drop zones, and these drop zones give us information about what's happening with the winds, the pressure levels, what's happening with the moisture in the atmosphere, all of those really important things that we need information on so that our weather models can be much more accurate with storm systems that can impact land. So they did find this, the uh, surface pressure was down to 998 also found the strongest wind gust was 37 uh, miles per hour, but again, that was not located near the center of the storm. Now, for this thing to get its act together, there's several things that we need. It's like Goldilocks and the Three Bears to make tropical systems kind of come together and form and strengthen. They need a lot of moisture around them. Well, it's got a lot of moisture right there. There is some dry air on the west side of these thing, this uh, thing. It also needs a lack of wind shear. Wind shears can disrupt tropical systems and their formation. Notice here in the north northern part of the Gulf of Mexico, there is a lot of wind shear. We're not seeing a lot of wind shear in the southern part of the Gulf of Mexico. You also need a lot of warm ocean waters and deep uh, depth to that ocean water. We do have a lot of those ocean waters that will be plenty warm enough for this thing to get its energy from that latent heat from the ocean waters. Let me show you, or the Gulf of Mexico, let me show you the forecast track. This is the European model. Every model looks a little bit different, but this will give you the general timeline and kind of picture of what the radar is going to look like and where we'll see rain moving in. You notice here on the forecast track, it's trying, these are our wind barbs, so it tries to show you these wind lines where the winds are going to be going. Going. That helps us pinpoint where the center of that circulation might end up being. So there it is over the Bay of Campeche right now as we head through the next 24 hours, kind of continuing on that northwestern track. Then as we get into Wednesday, Thursday time frame, steering currents take it more west northwest. So eventually the center of this thing heading in towards Mexico. But big picture, 
Do you see these onshore winds up here? It is just pulling in or pushing in a lot of tropical moisture, a lot of tropical rain. So this whole kind of southeast Texas area South Texas, they're gonna get a lot of moisture coming in and some pretty significant amounts of rainfall are going to be possible as we had throughout the next five to seven days. You notice here as we get into the end of the week and the weekend, Again, it's trying to throw another little low up there. Uh, there's something called the Central American Gyre, which just this time of year sometimes just spins up these little lows into the Gulf of Mexico. That's kind of a trend here over the next uh, 12 days to 14 days to see little potentially little lows that try to spin off there off the Yucatan Peninsula. All right, let's talk about rainfall amounts. You notice here, this is showing you over the next seven days, this is one of our weather models pinpointing how much rain are we going to see here in general. What I want you to point out and, and notice on this map is this big area in yellow. That big area in yellow, those are forecast rainfall totals in excess of 10 inches of rain. So even if this thing, the center of it, gets nowhere near Texas and it stays in Mexico, it's going to push a lot of really deep tropical moisture on shore, and that's going to lead to really immense amounts of rainfall. So there could be some significant flooding potential there. Uh, already the Weather Prediction Center, they've put out a moderate flood risk there for kind of day two, three timeline. Let me show you a big picture what else we're tracking in the tropics. That's us right there in Georgia. That's where we're broadcasting from right now. There's another little broad area of low pressure that is over off in the Atlantic that has a low chance of development over the next seven days as it kind of drifts off towards the west. And also, as I talked about with that Central American gyre, this is another circle that's highlighted. It's not there yet, but a broad area of low pressure by the end of the week and start of the weekend might potentially show some low chances of development. So battle of two weather stories going on. A lot of tropical moisture working on shore through Texas, and we've already seen a lot of that tropical moisture and the axis of it really getting funneled up through the Mississippi River Valley as well. But meanwhile, for places in the Great Lakes over into the Northeast and what we experienced over the weekend here in Georgia is all about the heat, this really big heat dome right off the uh, coast. And that heat dome under the center of it, I mean, these are really impressive. We call them 500 millibar huts. That's kind of a measure of at the 500 millibar letter, the thickness of the atmosphere near records for a lot of temperatures up there. They were setting records today. Toledo, Ohio set a record of 99 degrees, but that heat dome is gonna be stuck over the Eastern US here for the rest of the week and into the weekend. So this means more heat to come. And for us here in Georgia, it also means we have a suppressed rainfall chance, lower rainfall chances here. Uh, than what we saw even yesterday. So it's gonna be hot, it's gonna be dry, it's gonna be crispy for us. Our temperatures the next couple days are nowhere um, near impressive for this time of year. It's just a little bit above average. But as we get into the weekend, it does look like our numbers in Georgia are going to go up again. So we'll see more of that really high heat and humidity building back in. Day by day, here's how it goes for us. 91 here on Tuesday. Juneteenth, I backed the number off a little bit. There's a kind of a northerly component to our easterly wind. So kind of a northeast wind that might hold us a little bit uh, less hot. We'll just call it, I'm not gonna call it cool. 91 by Thursday. And then as we get into the end of the week of the weekend, those numbers are going back up again. So we'll be back in the mid 90s for the weekend. Now what's also backing off slightly is the humidity. Things have been very humid out here the last couple of days. This plot shows us the humidity levels. It's a measure of the dew points. That's kind of the pure measure of how humid and sticky or comfortable things feel outside. Well, it got pretty humid out there today and yesterday. The numbers go down a little bit middle of the week. And then as we get into the end of the weekend, we do expect those numbers to go up again. So eventually we'll see our next chance of some isolated showers and storms returning. Uh, lows tonight. Now we're talking about tropics, talking about heat. I want to get to just the nuts and bolts of the forecast here in Atlanta. Tonight we'll be dropping down to the low 70s and upper 60s. And then for tomorrow, partly sunny. It's going to be hot outside quite as humid as today, but still enough to where it might feel more like 92 in the afternoon here in the, the uh, capital of the city. 83 degrees at lunchtime and then 91 in the afternoon. So just to kind of recap, I'm going to show you again what we're tracking. Potential tropical cyclone one. This is not technically a named tropical storm yet. 
this is something that the hurricane center says all right this has the potential to become a tropical system the impacts will be like a tropical system along the coast so that's why we're going to go ahead and issue a cone of uncertainty a track and also put out some tropical storm watches on the coast of texas so we don't have that well-developed center of the storm low level center where the strong winds are right around the outside as well but this will have some moderate uh, and modest chances of developing further as we head throughout the next couple days. So again, there are tropical storm watches up for parts of the coast of Texas, and I'll show you that cone of uncertainty from the Hurricane Center again, west-northwest, wind staying, kind of low-end tropical storm levels. Eventually, this might get its act together and become a tropical system. I know these icons show tropical storm. It may not actually have those tropical characteristics quite yet over the next 24 hours, but eventually heading into Mexico with a lot of rain up to the north pushing through Texas. Texas. That is the latest. I'm meteorologist Melissa Nor with the 11 Alive Storm Trackers. Now we are tracking more heat for the weekend. Also, eventually some rain chances. We'll break down that in a brand new track on Tropical Cyclone 1 that's coming up tonight on 11 Alive News here in Atlanta at 11.